Hi everybody. Today we are going to be talking about IBM I AS400 Kafka connector in Confluent. So today we have uh, uh, Rajkumar Kompali, who is a senior software engineer at InfoView Systems, going to uh, present you with the demo and take us through it, which is in the Confluent Hub. Myself, Sri Ranjani, who uh, I head the marketing for InfoView Systems, and I'm the host for this uh, session. Just a little uh, overview about uh, what we are going to talk. I mean, what we're going to talk about today. Uh, so our IBM IAS 400 Kafka Connect uh, is a pre-built customizable product which is maintained by InfoView Systems Incorporated. This is aimed at this product is aimed at saving IT organizations months of engineering to design, test, and maintain a connector. So uh, with the IBM IAS 400 Kafka connector, now a development team can securely capture changes happening in AS400 databases and store them as different Kafka topics to facilitate data synchronization, um, real-time analytics, and modernize data warehouses. Quickly, uh, I'm going to pass this uh, session to Rajkumar Kumpali. Um, so uh, Rajkumar, you can uh, start the demo. Thank you. Sure. Uh, so uh, first we will go to the installation, uh, how we can install in standalone mode. And for this, uh, we need to visit a website uh, called Confluent Hub. And there you can find our connector, Kafka Connect IBMI. So here we have the link for installation. Uh, so we can directly copy this link here and we can execute directly in the bin directory of your Confluent home wherever it is installed. And this jar will be automatically downloaded and uh, uh, moved into the plugin path directly. So if we are run, going to run this in the Docker mode, so we need to install the Docker as a prerequisite and then we need to download the jar file uh, using this download button. Uh, we have a uh, I mean, this download button is for a manual download. So we need to download that jar for manually and we need to place in in the respective path which a Docker file is specified. So, and we also need to download the respective Docker file and Docker compose file too. So and once we have downloaded all the required files, we need to update the license path and connector jar path in the Docker file. And then we can start the Docker using a simple command docker compose up. So this command will copy all the files, I mean the jar files, license files and all to the specified path. And, and the docker will be up and running now. So uh, this is all about installation. So uh, uh, after, as soon as you install the connector and if you go to localhost 9021, then you should able to see uh, this control center. So I, I have deployed this in my cloud service uh, called Azure. And so I have logged in with my IP address colon 9021. So in this control center, you should be able to see the topics, what we have, the connect, case equal DB, and all this stuff. So let's move on to connect first, uh, connect default, and add connector. So this is a place where we will see all our connectors, I mean, installed connectors. So this is uh, AS400 data queue sync, program call sync, and source connector. These three are the connectors which we have developed, and we are going to demo all these three connectors now. So moving on to AS400 source connector first. So, uh, so first we will start with AS400 source connector. This connector is used to read the data from AS400 data queues and push us to topic. So while configuring this, uh, we have some important properties that are required to be configured first. Coming to the connection section, this is where uh, your entire endpoint, uh, I mean, entire the connection will take place to AS400 system. Uh, and this is the field where we need to give the endpoint of your AS400 system, the user ID, the password, and the license path. So the license path is the most important for this configuration because every request that comes from any external system will be validated using the license file. 
so uh, ibm i as 400 systems uh, sorry info your systems uh, will provide the as 400 license file to you and using this license file you can log on to as 400 systems that license file has to be copied somewhere where application has access to that location here for our use uh, i have copied the license file in the temp directory and if uh, and i need to give the directory name as slash temp uh, and we don't need to specify the license file name here uh, application will append the license file to the respective path which you have provided here so consider a scenario where we are running the connector in the docker mode then the license path has to be declared in the, the docker file itself so the docker file will pick the license file uh, from the path specified which is already in the docker file and this will be placed in the respective directory so we need not worry about uh, copying and moving the docker file uh, license file in the respective position docker will take care of uh, copying and pasting all the license files and uh, and we also have some fields here like uh, secured connection uh, if this if we consider this is a secured connection then we also need to give the trust store file path uh, tls password is insecure so these are some important fields where if you want to do a tls related configuration and the trust store file is also a, a important file which is provided by infoview systems and even that also copied uh, just like a license file so that should be copied in the respective directory and that directory location has to be given here uh if i have copied into the same directory called temp then the respective uh, file path has, will be picked there and we also have the source uh, source connection secure connection is true or false if it is true then we need to give these all locations and and we also have a uh, trust trust or file password and this is also most important to validate the trust or file and if uh, and we have some other properties here which are additional i am not going to talk about this but a detailed explanation is being provided in the documentation where you will get in uh, confluent hub so moving on to the next uh, section called source this source is going to be the very important section where since this is a source connector we will read the data from source so source connector uh, indicates the configuration of a data queue since we read from a data queue so here we will give a data queue name the library on which data queue exists uh, we need to give the key if it is keyed and this is a search type generally uh, we mostly use greater than or equal to for search type and this is one important field called uh, keep messages in queue this is a boolean value and we mostly prefer to be false generally uh, false indicates we will delete the data as soon as we read the data from the data queue so we are not keeping any messages even after reading and we can also give the format file name here so that uh, the mapping would be very easy consider if we get some data and we also got a file format here then that will be very easy for the system or the further connector to convert it to respect to java or json format and uh, and this is a library here is a library where the format file exists and number of consumers and so on so this is a a major i mean typical configuration for source and a data queue and we have one more section called kafka section where whatever the data which we read from the source section will be pushed to this particular topic so here we need to give the topic name whatever might be the demo topic and the topic partition and the partition name this is optional so uh, whatever the name we declare here this topic will be created automatically in the backend and the data which we read from the data queue will be pushed to the respective topic and we also have one more important section called source acknowledgement so as soon as the data is read from the data queue and pushed to the respective topic we will fire an acknowledgement back to the data queue in the source acknowledgement section consider uh, this is a response data queue uh, i will give as a res uh, response data queue 
and in some library called demo and if it is keyed or not uh, i will give a story so if you give like this uh, so this uh, whenever uh, so if the response data queue is keyed uh, whatever key that we get from the source data queue that same key will be used for the response data queue we can track easily the response using the key and the expression we can use as push to topic or or, or any expression uh, i am going to use as push to topic here so this will be the message that is being pushed to the data queue with the so same key where we get from the source and uh, and this is about the source acknowledgement section and we have one important section called uh, common section here we have two important fields called key converter class and value converter class so uh, so consider if we get a data in the json format and uh, uh, needs to be converted to avro then we need to declare the respect to avro converter class in the key and the value here and uh, vice versa is also possible like if at all we get the data in the json format and we can convert to avro2 or if at all we get data in the avro and we can convert to json so here the key and value converter classes are important if at all we want to convert the data and this is all about uh, a source connector kindly let me know if in the comment section if you have any queries or suggestions uh, i will be moving on to the next connector Called a program called Sync Connector. So, a program call the functionality of this connector is to read the data from the topic and send to the program as parameter. So, since this will read from the topic, it expects a, a topic which is already exists. So, that will be the same topic where the source connector will create the topic. So, consider source connector has created one topic called uh, AS400 inbound. And this will be uh, input for program call parameter topic now. So now coming to the configuration here, we have a connection section, uh, which is quite common with uh, all the connectors we have. So since I have explained all these connection properties uh, in the earlier connector, I'm going to speak skip this section now. And the main important connector here uh, is the program call. So here we need to declare the program name and the library in which the program exists, the program parameters. We will come to program parameters a little later and the procedure name. If if there is a procedure as attached to program, then we need to declare here and the procedure return value and whether it is a thread shape or not. So these are uh, more important properties that we require for a program generally and coming to the program call parameters. Uh, this is generally a JSON format. So uh, are like uh, generally so all the fields that are present in this JSON format are likely to be in out or in out parameters. And we need to note that there is one important field uh, source field name in this JSON, which is used to map the value we get from the topic to the respective field. So so as soon as the, we get the data from the topic, that respective data using the source field name uh, will be mapped to the parameters here we declare and these parameters are sent to the program call directly to call a program and we have one important section called sync topic where as soon as we uh, create a program call here we will get a response and we will write response to some topic and we will declare that topic here so generally this will be a uh, a program call response. So a program call response topic will be created uh, with the response that we get from the program call. And coming to the common session, we have similar key converter class and value converter class. Where if it if we would like to declare these for conversions, then we can. If at all, we don't. And coming to the next connector here is the uh, data queue sync connector. And since this is sync, uh, it also expects a topic in earlier so that we can read that topic directly and push to the. Push to the data queue. So I mean the functionality of this connector is to read the data from the topic and push to the data queue. 
So the common section and connection section are quite similar for all the connectors. And coming to the sink, uh, which will be the important section for this connector, where since we are syncing to the data queue, we need to declare the data queue name, the library in which data queue exists, whether it is keyed or not, and the format file name, as I explained you, uh, if the format file name is declared, then it will be easy for the connector or the program to uh, map the values easily. So, and the format file library in which the format file exists and DQ entry length, the DQ key length. So these two are might be an optional and this will be a typical uh, sync connector configuration. So as soon as I click on next, uh, generally. Uh, so there are a lot of validations here. Uh, let me show you uh, one connector which I have already exists. So I'm going to upload my program call connector here. So this is one connector which I have. So I'm reading from a 400 inbound source order. And I have used two key converter classes like uh, string converter is my key and JSON converter is my value. That means the data which I get in the key is a string and for value is a JSON. And coming to the connection, I have my URL endpoint, username, password, the license path is temp, and uh, my, all my programs are in this library. So I have declared the library in the library list. And this is a secured connection. Uh, I have used my temp directory to fetch my trust or file path. I have declared the TLS password here and is in secure false this since this is a secure connection is keyed and a cluster configured and coming to the program call section this is my program and the library where program exists these are the parameters that i have so these parameters are directly mapped with the data i get from the topic and i don't have any procedures attached to this program so i'm leaving this empty and this is the topic where the response has to be seen so as soon as we get the response from this program I will write to this topic. And I have used uh, converters enable. Uh, I mean, this is schema enabling where whatever the key and value we declared in the common section, we can declare schema too. So for now, I'm not going to declare any schema since I don't want to save schema. I don't want to save. I save. I want to save only the data here. So as soon as I click on next, it will show the entire configuration that we have declared there and uh, further perspective validation and as soon as we click on launch the connector will be up and running so a uh, program call connector is now up and running and uh, i will show you uh, one more connector called source connector where the common section is quite similar where the key is string and the json for value and the common section is similar and coming to the source uh, i'm going to use the data queue here the library key is one two three and I have used not equal. This can be a greater than or equal to. And I'm going to delete a message after reading as soon as and a file file name here and the format file library. And this is the topic where I'm going to write the data as soon as I read from data queue. And uh, this is the acknowledgement data queue where I will uh, trigger an acknowledgement back to this data queue using the expression there push to topic. And I don't want to save the schema here also. So uh, as soon as I click on launch, uh, the source connector is also up and running. Uh, so this is how uh, uh, we will uh, clear. Uh, I mean, this is how we will do the configuration for source and sync connectors. And uh, for this demo, uh, I want to show you how uh, how a data is being fetched from Salesforce and how that is that will be processed in the AS400 systems and a response back to Salesforce again. So, so for this, uh, let me show you uh, my developer console for Salesforce. So I, I'm gonna signing up here, the demo directly here. I'm going to use orders object here. So I have a couple of orders here, so I'm going to create a new order. As soon as I click uh, create a new order and uh, I will add some program products here. So 
So let's add uh, two products. One quantity one. Yes, the programs are added. So I'm going to activate this record now. So as soon as we activate this record, uh, we will see uh, the MuleSoft will pick that record and push to our AS400 inbound order topic. So uh, we will see the record number is 228. Uh, so we can go back and check once. Yes, we got the record called 228. So this is the record that we got and we are going to map all these properties as X source uh, in the program called parameters. So program call parameter is a fixed structure and uh, we are going to take these values individually to map that particular parameter so that our program call parameters will be fulfilled. And uh, we, we can check the respective uh, program call response here. So uh, so then this will be a typical program call response. So uh, we got the response as 228 for order and the target order. So this is the response. That means we uh, it indicates that the program call executed successfully. 